I am hopeful that with the great minds of the professors at the Hebrew University and at the Western Hospital and the University Health Network, we will make a difference. The uh, incidence of Parkinson's, incidence and prevalence of the disease is increasing as the population ages. All the more reason that we have to attend to these diseases and find the answers. Parkinson's, in very simplistic but important terms, is dopamine deficiency and the dopamine deficiency causes many of the symptoms and we have a wonderful way of replacing that dopamine deficiency with the precursor of dopamine, levodopa. And it's still the best drug we have for Parkinson's. But with that, it brought baggage. And one of the most important pieces of baggage that levodopa brought was the development of these abnormal involuntary movements or dyskinesias. And many patients are much uh, disabled or bothered by these dyskinesias. They can be limiting to the doses that we use. And these are one of the commonest reasons that people undergo the neurosurgical treatments for Parkinson's nowadays. Circuits malfunction in the brain. Neurons go berserk in some illnesses, like in Parkinson's disease, where neurons misfire. So instead of having a beautiful symphony, you have a disarray uh, of random uh, events, random neurons firing in an inappropriate way, causing signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So we're able to go into these circuits of the brain and adjust their activity using electricity. We're able to put electrodes in these circuits and tune the circuits so that they function in a better way. And in so doing, we can alleviate the major signs and symptoms of patients with Parkinson's disease. We implant the chronic electrode that is connected to a pacemaker under the skin of the patient. And this chronic pacemaker is all the time stimulating the brain and enable other part of the brain to take control instead of the damaged basal ganglia. When you see two different videos, one before and the other after uh, the closed loop deep brain stimulations, you cannot believe that these two individuals are one and the same. This is a fabulous opportunity where two great institutions are combining two fabulous scientists and their teams to advance Parkinson's research and patient care. Collaborations such as are planned with the Hebrew University allows us to study and expand our knowledge in more people to see if disorders are the same or different, to explore avenues that may not be present here, that may be present at the Hebrew University, and vice versa. Everyone's bringing to the plate, you know, their techniques, their expertises, uh, their interests, and this is clear uh, indication of synergism in science. When you see Professor Lang, or Dr. Lang as you call it, and Professor Bergman, or Dr. Bergman, as you call it, you see peas and carrots. You see a combination of success, and at the same time, humble, meek, committed two scientists. Both know medicine at the same time, basic sciences, and around them there is an electrifying mood whenever they work together. People who understand everything there is to know about these diseases, it's wonderful to see these stars interact. They're respectful of each other's experience. They add to each other's experience. I'm very excited to work with uh, Professor Hager Bergman and uh, Professor Tony Lang. This is a great opportunity for me as a uh, young doctor and a young psychiatrist to work with those uh, people. Hagai Bergman is an old friend uh, and uh, a colleague who I've respected for a long time and I'm very excited by the opportunity to be able to work with him. This is the first opportunity for the both of us to work together, to meet each other, to discuss our common dreams, our common strategy, and to develop a new way that we believe that will change the world. I really think that we are kind of two of the best DBS, so Deep Brain Stimulation uh, uh, Center for Parkinson's disease in the world. The group in, in Toronto is one of the leading group all over the world with the care of patients with Parkinson's disease. 
we can learn so much from their insight to the pathophysiology, to the clinical symptoms of Parkinson's disease, that we believe that it will be very helpful for us and for the Toronto group that to collaborate and to find the new way for the treatment of the future. The work with Hebrew University is an interesting opportunity to uh, collaborate on several aspects that we do um, well but uh, would benefit from a combination or a combined approach. One of their areas of expertise is in the preclinical, uh, the basic science understanding dyskinesia, whereas we're bringing the clinical expertise to, to the, uh, the programme. The studies that we're proposing in collaboration with Hebrew University are designed to give us better answers, to tell us what are the basic brain mechanisms underlying these involuntary movements, why do they change following the surgery and how do they change, how do they change in response to the medication and therefore how can we intervene to uh, alter them in, in um, more effective ways. We're planning to combine uh, PET imaging for example to see how before and after surgery the brain has changed following the brain stimulation in relation to levodopa induced dyskinesias. The outcome should be, and we really hope that it will be, we will be able to prevent the development of levodopa induced dyskinesia, and if they already develop, to provide much better treatment. And at the end, because this is the most important for us, uh, help to improve the quality of life of the patient. I think the impact of the collaboration is going to be a better understanding of the dyskinesias, a better understanding of the changes of the brain following the surgery and what the surgery actually does to the brain. The old no man is an island, no researcher is an island, no research program is an island now. We have to do this collectively because the, the diseases are so important, the suffering that our patients and families are going through are so critical. We've got to get the answers soon and this is how you get to them quicker. I am very hopeful that people who have Parkinson's, if they can't cure it, at least that their lives will change for the better. That I am quite confident that will happen.